This is activity two, step by step by step by step from lesson four, more balanced moves. And in this activity, there's um, the same equation that's solved by Claire and solved by Lynn. And they both get an answer for X or a solution of negative eight and ask, is that solution correct? And what are some different things that each of them did? And what are some things that they did that are the same? And here is the solution um, to each equation or the path each person took side by, shown side by side. I'm gonna come back to this at the end so that you can see each of these steps side by side, but I'm gonna show them individually. But the answer is, negative eight, x does equal negative eight, because if you take negative eight and you replace x with it up here, on this side, if you work this side out, you get an um, answer of negative 93, and then if you work this side out, after replacing x with negative eight, you get an answer also of negative 93. So x does equal negative eight. So what did they do the same, and what did they do that's different? And the first thing I did, which is the first thing I always do, as I looked at the subtraction here as subtracting a positive 2x, and I'm going to change it to adding a negative 2x. It's going to make it easier for me to combine like terms and to make sure that I don't get confused or mixed up as far as the operation and the sign of these integers. So that's the first step I took here for Claire and also this first step for Lynn. So changing, subtracting a positive 2 a, 2x to adding a negative 2x. All right, so Claire, what Claire decided to do, and actually what they both did is they combined these like terms. They combined all the x's together. And so there's a, on, on the left side, so there's a total of 12 x's on the left side. Lynn did the same thing, total of 12 x's on the left side. But Claire decided to factor out the three. So a common um, 12 and three are common multiples of three. So you can divide each of these terms by three. And so it's, it's as if you're taking 12 things and putting them into three separate groups. And so you're gonna put four of those into each of the groups and you're gonna put one of these into each of the groups. So you're gonna left, be left with three groups of four X plus one. And so you look at this and you say, what's 12x divided by 3? Because I want to divide these into three groups. Well, that's 4x. And what's 3 divided by 3? Because I want to divide that those three things into three groups. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. And on the right side, you have three groups also. Now, she could be looking ahead and realizing, gee, I have three groups here. I wonder if I can make three groups here. And then I can do something to get rid of those threes. On the um, other side, on the other path, Lynn decided I'm not going to factor out the three. I'm actually going to take this three here and distribute it to the five X and the nine. And what that means is it's really as if you're taking those three groups and you're taking all of the X's out, combining those all together and you have 15 total X's because three times five X equals 15 X and you take nine things out of three separate groups, combine them all together, and you have 27 total things. That's the distributive property. Three times five X is 15 X, and three times nine is 27. All right, so Claire decided, gee, I have three groups of each thing, of these things on each side. I can multiply through by one third. I can look at just one of these three groups. So if you multiply by one third, that's taking one of the three groups. So one third of three is one. So now I'm just gonna look at four X plus one. And I know that has to equal five X plus nine because I have three groups of each of these things and they're all equal. So one group has to equal one group on the other side. Lynn says, all right, I'm gonna get rid of the numbers on one side by adding negative three, so to remove the three from the left side, and I'm gonna get rid of the 15x on the right side to, by adding a negative 15x, and so the left side becomes a negative three x. So what she's doing is getting all the x's to one side and all of the numbers to the other side. And when she does that, she ends up with the negative three x equals 24, and then to 
look at a single x, you can multiply by the multiplicative inverse of a negative 3, which is negative 1 third. And you can look at that as, so you're going to multiply by negative 1 third. You can think of that as the opposite of 1 third. So what's 1 third of a negative 3? Well, 1 third of negative 3 is negative 1. And then what's the opposite of that negative 1 is 1. That's how you get this coefficient, negative 3, to this coefficient of 1. You multiply by the multiplicative inverse. This is just a way of thinking through it so you understand why that multiplication works in the way that it does. And then on this side, you can look at this as the opposite of 1 third of 24. Well, what's 1 third of 24 is 8, and the opposite of 8 is negative 8. On the other hand, Claire is... She's multiplied through by one third. So now she has just one group here, 4x plus 1, and one group here, 5x plus 9. So now she has to get rid of the, the x's on one side and the numbers on the other side. She's gonna, so, she's gonna, so she is going to get rid of this 4x by adding a negative 4x. And she's going to get rid of this 9 by adding a negative 9. So she moves all the x's over here and moves the numbers over here, and she's left with x equals negative 8. And then, so what are some of the steps that they took that are alike and some that are different? And I listed them here. So they, in the first step, they both combine like terms. So up here, they combine like terms in the first step. The second step is really the key. Um, Claire decides to factor. Lynn decides to use the distributive property. So Claire decides to um, factor the 3 out to get 3 of, of, the, of this group and 3 groups of this. So she uses the, um, she factors out the, the common 3 from 12x plus 3, whereas Lynn decides to use the distributive property. That's the key difference in both of these paths. From there, it's just a matter of moving x's to one side and the numbers to the other side and getting rid of the coefficient. So you multiply and you add. So she multiplies to get down to a single group here. Um, Lynn, because he's used the or she's used the distributive property, then she can just add to move all of the numbers to one side and then adds again to move all the x's to the other side and then has to multiply to get rid of that negative 3. So you see add, 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 and multiply. Claire doesn't have to get rid of any coefficient. The coefficient just by chance, I think, turns out to be 1x when she subtracts the 4x from the 5x or adds a negative 4x to this 5x. But the key difference is the step up here where Claire decides to factor out the 3 right here and Lynn decides to use the distributive property right here. That is the key difference between both of these paths. All right, so May did, uh, worked on the same problem but got a different answer. So she made a mistake somewhere. And the question is, where did she make her mistake? Well, the first step is I changed this to adding a negative 2x, and she combined like terms. So that's okay. It's the same step that the other two students used. But then the next step she did is she decided, I'm going to get rid of this 5x right here by adding a negative 5x. So she adds a negative 5x, and she ends up with 7x on this side. She adds a negative 5x here, and she says, oh, okay, now this is now just 3 times 9. This is not okay. You have to distribute first. This is, and I made a little note here, there are actually three of these 5x's. There's three groups. Each group has a 5x in there. It's not just a single 5x that you can get rid of. You have to get rid of all three of those 5x's. And the way you do that is you multiply, you change um, this side to 15x plus 27. You multiply by that 3 first. So you change this to 15x, and then you can get rid of that 15x by adding a negative 15x. And over here, this would become a negative 3x, and you'd end up with negative 3x equals 24, which is what the other two students ended up with. But the point here is that you have to recognize this is three groups of whatever's inside these parentheses, whatever's inside that group. 
And so there really are three of these five x's, not just one of them. And Noah worked on the same problem, and he also made a mistake somewhere because he does not get the same answer. He gets a different answer. So where did he make his mistake? And so he also combined like terms in the beginning, but then he added a negative 15x. And this is the example of what we are talking about before. Here is, he used the distributive property to go from this expression to this expression down here. So there are the three 5x's right here as 15x. And then he said, okay, I'm going to get rid of that 15x by adding a negative 15x, which is okay. But on this side, unfortunately, he added a positive 15x. You have to do the same thing to both sides. Remember, you have to keep them balanced. So if he's going to add a negative 15x to this side, he has to add a negative 15x to this side. So it should be a negative 15x. If he had done that, this would be a negative 3x. And if you work down on this side, you get a negative 3x equals 24 which is what the other two students got.